Hi, this is Jeff. Today we're going to have a look at uh, the output of a speed light compared to the output of a studio light. Um, we're just doing a, a, a pretty rough test here. Uh, this is not a light laboratory, but uh, we've controlled the environment uh, pretty pretty much as much as we can. We've got one key light over here to give us enough light to, to make the video. Um, but what I'll do is, Mike, if you can just take a photo at uh, f5.6 ISO 100, we'll get an idea of, of the ambient light in here uh, as, a, as a reference point. Thanks. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're triggering uh, the YN565 speed light, which has a guide number of 56. What the guide number of 56 means that we should be able to get a correctly exposed shot from 10 feet away at f5.6. So distance times f-stop equals guide number. Now, we, we talk in feet and we talk in ISO 100 because guide numbers have been around since the film days when everything was measured in feet and ISO 100 was, was a much more common exposure. Mike, if you can just take a shot at uh, ISO 100 f5.6 so we can get an idea of whether that's measuring up. And how's the exposure on that? Yeah, that's about right. Okay, so if we go up to f6.3, we should start to get an underexposure. Is that starting to struggle? Usable, but still could be better. Okay. So, you know, it would be overstating the fact to say that we're getting correct exposure and, and at 6.3, and thus it's not a guide of 63, because it's not 6.3 at 10, uh, 10 feet, it's 5.6 will give us a correct exposure, and thus we've got a guide number. So what we're going to do now is show you the difference in output from one studio head. Um, so we'll just switch that over and we'll do some more test shots. Okay, so now what we're going to do is the same shot, same camera, same ISO setting, same f-stop, uh, but we're using the 400 watt second studio flash, just one of. So Mike, if you can just take a, a test shot of that and we can get some idea of the exposure at uh, 5.6. And that's a lot more light. Wow. Okay, so let's jump straight up to nine. We'll skip a couple there because we know that this is going to be a fair way up, but that's just a side by side comparison. F9. So at F9. So that would be a guide number of 90. How's that looking, Mike? Better. Better. Still overexposed. F10. So if we're talking F10 at 10 feet, we're talking about a guide number of 100 compared to a speed light of guide number 56. What that means is that uh, if you were shooting uh, a, a group, whether it's a, uh, a family portrait, whether it's a wedding group, a bridal party, whether it's a debutante ball, whatever it is, once you've got a group where you've got two or three people deep, you need to use a, a larger f-stop to ensure that everyone's in focus. So if you do need, do need to go to f16 or f22, um, obviously we don't have to shoot from 10 feet away and we don't have to only use one, one flash head. If we had two studio flashes, we can quite comfortably get up to f22 uh, and, and get you know, a good amount of depth to get everyone in focus. The other benefit of a studio flash over a speed light is that you're talking mains power. We're not gonna run out of power, run out of batteries, you know, 200 shots through. If you're pumping it at 400, uh, at, at full power, you'll probably get about 400 shots out of a, a speed light if you're using good quality Parax batteries. If you need to shoot more than that, you need to be changing batteries somewhere along the way. They don't slow down either. You know, once you get to the end of your life of your AA batteries in a speed light, you start to get a longer flash recycle. Doesn't happen with your studio flashes. They can keep firing at that power level. You can do 10 of those shots in 14 seconds. So a lot of faster refresh when you're talking big numbers. So there are a lot of benefits of a, of a studio flash over a speed light um, when, you when you're doing static shots. Power, which gives you the depth of field. Um, because of the output, you can fill a much larger diffuser. We're shooting this bare at the moment, just with an aluminum shroud. 
Um, if you put on a soft box or an octo box or an umbrella, you're gonna lose a stop of power, but you still got a lot left. And then you're talking about a light source this big, you get a much, lot, much softer light. You can't do that in a speed light because it can't fill a 150 octo box. So yeah, lots of benefits of studio flashes. Um, very affordable to get started in, in being able to do some nice quality portraiture. So check them out.